Welcome to the Walk Boldly with Jesus podcast. I am your host, Katherine Duggan. I created this podcast to inspire you to walk boldly in your Christian faith. Each weekday, I will talk about scripture and how these verses can relate to your everyday life. Spending time each day with the Word of God is a great way to fortify your faith. I'm so glad to have you along on this journey. Let's get started. The title of today's episode is The Prodigal Son. The scripture verse is Luke chapter 15 verses 20 to 24. So he set out for his father's house, but while he was still a long way off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion. He ran to him, threw his arms around him, and kissed him. Then the son said to the father, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his servants, Quickly, bring out the finest robe we have and put it on him. Place a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. Then bring the fatted calf and kill it, and let us celebrate with a feast. For this son of mine was dead and has come back to life. He was lost and now has been found. And they began to celebrate. I really like hearing other people talk about the various aspects of the parable of the prodigal son. It seemed like such a straightforward story to me, at least at first glance. For those who are not aware of the parable, let me read it to you. Luke chapter 15, verses 11 to 32. The parable of the lost or prodigal son. Then he said, There was a man who had two sons. The younger of them said to his father, Father, Give me the share of your estate that I will inherit. And so the father divided the property between them. A few days later, the younger son gathered together everything he had and traveled to a distant country, where he squandered his inheritance on a life of desolate living. When he had spent it all, a severe famine afflicted the country, and he began to be in need. So he went and hired himself out to one of the local inhabitants, who sent him to his farm to feed the pigs. He would have willingly filled his stomach with the pods that the pigs were eating, but no one gave him anything. Then he came to his senses and said, How many of my father's hired workers have more food than they can consume, while I am here dying of hunger? I will depart from this place and go to my father's, and I will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you, I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Treat me like one of your hired workers. So he set out for his father's house. But when he was still a long way off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion. He ran to him, threw his arms around him, and kissed him. Then the son said to the father, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his servants, Quickly, bring out the finest robe we have and put it on him. Place a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. Then bring the fatted calf and kill it, and let us celebrate with a feast. For this son of mine was dead and has come back to life. He was lost, and now he has been found. And they began to celebrate. Now the elder son had been out in the fields, and as he returned and drew near to the house, he could hear the sounds of music and dancing. He summoned one of the servants and inquired what all this meant. The servant replied, Your brother has come home, and your father has killed the fatted calf, because he has him back safe and sound. The elder son then became so angry and refused to go in. His father came out and began to plead with him. But he said to the father in reply, All these years I have worked like a slave for you and never once disobeyed your orders. Even so, you have never even given me a young goat so that I may celebrate with my friends. But when this son of yours returns, after wasting his inheritance from you on prostitutes, you killed the fatted calf for him? Then the father said to him, Son, you are with me always, and everything I have is yours. But it was only right that we should celebrate and rejoice, 
because this brother of yours was dead and has come home, was lost and now has been found. I've heard many people talk about this one parable. Some have focused on the younger son who took his father's money and left. Some focus on the father and his willingness and even eagerness to forgive. Others focus on the older son who stayed and worked his father's land. Every time I listen to someone explain the story, I learn something new. No matter how many times a story is explained, there's a whole new level I didn't know about. It truly amazes me. Today, I want to explain one small part of it that Father Mike explained on day 319 of Bible in a Year podcast. I thought it was so great, and I think everyone should hear how he explained the interaction between the younger son and the father when the son comes home. Father Mike explains that when the younger son is leaving, he's saying he doesn't want anything to do with his father. He takes his inheritance and leaves. Then he comes home because he's starving. Father Mike and Stephanie Parks, who works for Focus, created this retreat called the Prodigal Son Retreat, and it focuses on the four things the father said when the son came home. First, what does it mean that the father gave him the best robe? In the ancient world, you only have a couple of robes, and only one best robe. This son just took half the father's money and squandered it away. He wasn't a good son. He was a failure. And yet the father says, give him the best robe. This represents giving him the glory of the father. Next, the father says, put a ring on his finger. On that ring would be a signet of the father, a sign of the father's authority. So not only is he clothing him in the father's glory, but he's putting on his hand the father's authority. He is fully restoring him to sonship. Thirdly, he is saying, put shoes on his feet. Why? Because the son is free. He is free to leave again if he wants to. Lastly, the father says, kill the fatted calf. There are not a lot of fatted calves lying around. You get one. Not only does he get the best robe, so he is clothed in the father's glory, but he also gets the ring that shows his father's authority. He's restored. Not only does he get shoes and is free to leave if he wants to again, but then they kill the fatted calf because he is relentlessly pursued and ridiculously celebrated. I haven't heard anyone explain the four things the father gives the son before. I knew the father was accepting the son back as is, but I didn't realize the significance of those four things. I love to do Bible studies and listen to people who have studied the Bible so much more than I have, explain the various things to me. There is so much depth to everything in the Bible, and if we're just reading it on our own, we can sometimes miss a lot. We might read something as is, without reading into it too much. However, a lot of times, there is so much more than what is being said in just words. This is why I have loved listening to the Bible in a Year podcast these past two years. Father Mike and Jeff Cavins, when he's on the show, give so much insight into what we are hearing when we listen to the Bible. There's another podcast called Exploring My Strange Bible by Tim Mackey. Each episode of this podcast is like a mini Bible lesson. It's so good. I really enjoy listening to it. I hope you enjoyed this brief insight into the parable today. In the episode number 319 of Bible in a Year, Father Mike also talks about the older brother in this parable. If you have time, I would check out the complete episode. It's really interesting. Dear Heavenly Father, I ask you to bless all those listening to this episode today. Lord, you are amazing. I love that you teach us in parables. I love that you reveal the truth to us slowly so we don't get overwhelmed. Thank you for showing us your love by demonstrating it in the father of this parable. You are so forgiving, and you welcome us with open arms. You don't even wait for us to get to the door. You see us from far off, and you run out to greet us. We are so lucky you love us so much. We love you, Father, and we are so grateful you forgive our sins. 
We are grateful you welcome us back in and restore us to sonship or daughtership. You are amazing, and we ask all of this in accordance with your will and in Jesus' holy name. Amen. Thank you so much for joining me on this journey to walk boldly with Jesus. I look forward to spending time with you again tomorrow. Remember, Jesus loves you, and so do I. Have a blessed day.